In this video, we're going to finally answer the ultimate question, can we beat Angry Birds Epic with only two birds? In the last video, we made our way from the start of the game all the way up to getting four total eggs out of five. Prince Porky and Wizpig have been on the run, and we've been getting closer and closer to finally beating the game. But as we get near the final castle, we face greater challenges than we ever have before, some putting us dangerously close to our doom. However, before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe. Everybody knows the drill, it's free and helps me out a lot. But with that being said, let's continue with the challenge. We make our way down the mountain. Fighting a Howler is our first task. We choose to enter the battle with Matilda's Druid and the Blue's Rogues, as combined they can deal serious chip damage each turn from their Thorns and Goose status effects respectively. Combining Matilda's healing with the Blue's chill ability, we can take out the Howler fairly easily, continuing on. At the same time, we buy a potion upgrade with our Snowlings, giving us even more potential healing per turn. We then make our way into the Pumpkin Plateau, encountering a few undead pigs. After wiping them all out using Chuck's Rage ability, we stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Mighty Eagle. He gives us a side quest. If we collect the magical sword from the rock, he'll give us a reward. Of course, we can't get to the sword yet, as we aren't even at that section of the map. However, we put in the back of our minds and continue on. On the next stage, we face off against a guard pig. The guard pig takes three turns to charge up his attack, but that inadvertently means his attack is insane against the flock. He deals three hits to random birds while healing for 200% of the delta damage. We go with the setup of Red's Guardian for his shields and chill ability, alongside Matilda's Cleric for healing and damage. Using them both, I can use almost all my turns on the offensive, only having to use our defensive abilities once every few turns. Although this strategy is super slow, it did work, and we were eventually able to dispose of our enemy. King Pig and Prince Porky then tried to block our way to the castle, but Red decides to pull a Starfish Reef mood and go around them via using his airship. Unfortunately, King Pig was prepared for this, and so he's already fortified the skies with his catapults. In retaliation, we decide to go through the Eastern Sea to reach Pig City. That doesn't go well because King Pig was duly prepared for this as well, and so he's fortified the seas with traps. A single one would kill us, and so as it stands, there is no way for us to reach the Fifth Castle. But luckily, we have help. Professor Pig decides to help us out, and tells us about the submarine, another form of transport that will allow us to go under the landmines and reach Pig City. Sadly, unlike the airship, Professor Pig can't build it, and thus we have to hunt down the submariner, a pig found in the northern sea to collect his ship. We start a journey there through entering the moorlands, a swampy area primarily infested with boars. Boars are pigs that take multiple turns to charge up attacks, but in compensation dish out heavy status effects damage. Red Samurai is crucial here, as his shield is needed to keep my birds alive. Eventually, we do encounter a brawler, who deals damage to all my birds every two turns. However, using Matilda's Cleric, we can negate most of the damage he deals, while also being able to dish out damage consistently. After beating him and fighting a few more regular pigs, we catch up to the Submariner, who decides to camp in the ocean, leading us on a chase. We fight a few pirates in the sea, primarily using the Cleric and Bomb's Cannoneer. Bomb's Rage Chili ability is pretty useful for wiping out waves of enemies, alongside his counter, which pretty much procs every turn. We defeat the Submariner in the next battle, and just like that, we've unlocked the Submarine, allowing us to continue our journey towards the 5th castle. After reaching the coastline of Pig City, Prince Porky realizes our plan, and orders all Pig troops to guard the path to King Pig's castle. As our first wave of enemies to knock out, we fight some guard pigs. With Red's Rage Chili ability, we can take down the first guard relatively easily, leaving only one left. Thanks to the garbage AI for this battle, the enemy decides to give himself a healing status effect three times in a row, which honestly gives us three turns to attack them, killing the foe quickly after that. Upon being defeated, the last guard tries to retreat into King Pig's castle, but Wizpig rages and turns him into a fly. I know last challenge I talked about this, but I still think Wizpig's power level is a plot hole that really needs to be discussed. Anyways, we then fight Prince Porky, and I switch to Chuck as his speed of light ability is incredibly useful against Porky's damage cap passive. We also choose the Cannoneer as his multi-hits are also useful against Prince Porky, alongside his counter ability which is needed to wipe out some of the rogue pigs. For a regular battle, it was quite difficult, and I did have to rely on potions at some points to stay alive. However, using the Rage Chili multiple times, we could swiftly defeat Prince Porky, moving on to the final enemy before the 5th castle, Whiz Pig. But, right before I entered the battle, I got lucky and I got a paper set at him for Bomb. It was completely unplanned, but honestly it gave Bomb a lot more HP and overall made him way more powerful. So, to test him out, we entered the Whizpig battle with his Cannoneer alongside Matilda's Cleric. We fought Whizpig alongside a Cactus Pig. We take him out first, and then we focus our damage towards Whizpig. And yeah, using Bomb, we can take him out pretty easily, 
Wispig then retreats to the final castle, leaving the area unguarded, and we can finally reach the fifth castle, the stronghold of the final egg. The fifth castle was quite possibly one of, if not the number one, hardest fight in all of the game. Using two birds in a castle is difficult enough, but especially at the fifth wave, things became much more difficult. With that being said, for this battle I decided to use Matilda's Cleric alongside Chuck's Rainbird. We needed as much healing as possible for this battle, so they seemed like the two best birds for the job. Specifically, Chuck's Rainbird was also crucial for the fifth phase, but we'll get to that later. The first three phases weren't too difficult, just like every other castle. However, things started to ramp up in the fourth stage. We face off against a guard pig and some final soldiers, and as the usual pattern goes, Chuck's rage ability comes in clutch here, and Matilda's damage output is extremely useful for getting past the guard's ironclad ability. After defeating the guard, we travel forwards into the fifth way of the castle, and come face to face with our most difficult fight in the game, our birds versus some of the most three powerful pigs in the saga. Prince Porky returns as usual, but seems to have learned from his mistake in the 4th castle. Every two turns he spawns in 3 healing bombs, which collectively heal 90% of all the pigs max HP. Yep, that's a bit broken. Whizpig also makes his debut by adding an attack that decreases all of our birds damage by 75%, and he heals from all the damage he takes as per usual. If that wasn't enough, King Pig himself decides to fight the flock, and with him comes an ability that blocks our birds rage till he attack for 2 turns. If you can't tell, this is where the Rainbird comes into play. Since his attack damaged all enemies at once, we can wipe out the healing bombs while still focusing on our main targets. Not to mention, his healing ability actually cleanses negative status effects from birds, which we absolutely need to counter King Pig's attacks. With that being said, the fight becomes several times easier thanks to Chuck. We focus on King Pig first, as he's the easiest enemy to take out and has no defense. Not to mention, blocking our rage ability is incredibly annoying, and getting rid of that is very useful for us. While hitting him every turn with Matilda, Prince Porky and Whizpig keep on slamming us with their attacks, having to prioritize our defense frequently. Chili Cakes become extremely important, as we help to activate Chuck's rage ability, which not only gives us damage, but health as well from Matilda's cleric. Combine that with our bird dispel passives from their weapons, and we can slowly defeat King Pig, leaving only two enemies to go. We decide to kill Whizpig next, as he is quite clearly the greater threat with the status effects and damage output, and his healing obviously. Luckily, thanks to the Rainbird's poison effect, Whizpig and Prince Porky are actually below half health each. Over the next three turns, we will down Whizpig's health, taking him down and leaving Porky on barely any HP. On the next turn, we finally defeat him, getting us the fifth egg. Well, not just yet. Whizpig decides to go rogue, and he steals the fifth egg in King Pig's crown, leaving the flock and other pigs at a major loss. Whizpig then retreats to the top of Hoghead Mountain, giving himself a giant shield around his castle. One egg still remains. We start our journey up Hoghead Mountain by unlocking a nice chest that gives us a good amount of Snoutlings, Golden Snoutlings, and Class Mastery. On the next battle, we fight a Necromancer and Earth Pig, and as usual, their healing effects stall the battle by a lot. Luckily, we can eventually take both pigs out before things get out of hand, continuing onwards. Unfortunately, this is where the game gets much more harder, and we quickly face off against the Inferno Pig, the first shield boss in our way to Whiz Pig. The Inferno Pig is a Firestorm attack that almost one-shots all my birds, alongside a damage boost ability. I enter with the Guardian for red shields, alongside the Cleric for a combo of healing and damage. Even then, within a few turns, the Inferno Pig managed to kill Matilda, leaving Red on barely any health without any way to heal. And with that, we have to leave the battle and look for a way to upgrade our birds. And just like last challenge, we were forced to our last resort, completing the Mighty Eagles quest. To get the sword, we have to go through an alternate path in the Eastern Sea to reach the pathway outside Pig City. All the battles themselves aren't too difficult, and quickly we can reach the old nest barrows for reaching the sword. But, as usual, there's a catch. As our final challenge, we have to fight a mirror version of Red, dubbed the Sword Spirit. And as a battle, it's quite unique. We can only use one bird in battle, and potions aren't allowed. We enter with the Blues Tricksters, as they can nullify the spirit shields. As for the gameplay, it's as basic as it could be keep on attacking the enemy until he dies, and would you look at that, he one-shot me. On our next attempt, we chose the red as he had a shield, allowing us to sustain for longer. This seemed to work better, as we would lose way less HP from the spirit, while being able to attack him right back. After a few turns, we fill up our rage chili, and just like that, the sword spirit is defeated. 
We then go up to the podium and Red unlocks the sword from the sheath, completing the quest. Back at the Mighty Eagle's home, we give him the sword, and just like that, we unlock the Mighty Eagle's dojo. The dojo is fairly simple. For paying stout links and golden coins, we gain Class Mastery, which increases our damage and health by 2% per level. We upgrade our Cleric, and right after, we craft a bunch of potions going broke. But just like that, we're ready to finally face off against the Inferno Pig for the rematch of a century. We restart the fight with our same setup as before, using the same exact strategy. Although it may not look like it, the dojo bonuses actually did make a fair difference, and combining with potions we could slowly whittle down the Inferno Pig's health. It may have been slow, and it may have drained our resources quickly, but we could eventually defeat our enemy on barely any health, damaging Whiz Pig's shield and moving on to the next foe, the Tempest Pig. The Tempest Pig is fairly similar to the Inferno Pig, except way stronger. His main attack is way more powerful, and his secondary ability gives him a version of Chuck Shock Shield. This battle, like all the other shield battles, sucked and we had to drain more than 10 potions trying to beat him. That was because we physically could not use Matilda, as we were stuck using the red and blues for their shields and status removal abilities respectively. Even then, we could eventually take down our foe, being able to move on to the third challenge of Whizpig's Gauntlet. The third boss of Whizpig's Magic Shield is the Earth Blood Pig. Just like all the others, he charges up an attack for two turns, alongside a positive status effect for your secondary ability. In this scenario, they give themselves a healing shield, but it doesn't mean anything considering the blues exist. Their main attack is pitiful as well, as it trades off damage for giving our birds a 35% damage reduction. This battle was pretty much a Tempest Pig battle, but way easier, since we had to use potions way less often. Although we still do get incredibly close to dying several times, like wow the blues to rival in 20 HP, we can dispose of the Earth Blood Pig within the next few turns, destroying the third section of Whiz Pig's shield. The next level is Magic Shield 4, and here we face off against the Blizzard Pig. Unlike the previous three bosses, both of his abilities are offensive, but at an expense he can dish out serious damage. His main ability deals a hefty amount of damage to a singular bird, and his Black Ice attack blocks all of our bird's rage abilities for 4 turns. We enter with the Guardian and Rain Bird for the standard combo of healing and shielding. Having the Rain Bird meant that we could neutralize the Black Ice effect, and meant we could actually heal throughout the fight, making the whole battle way easier. After defeating him, we get rid of the fourth section of Whizpig's shield, giving us only one more shield boss to fight, the Spirit Caller. The Spirit Caller isn't like the other four bosses. Although his attack doesn't deal too much damage, his secondary ability takes three turns to charge up. After those three turns, he spawns in a simple ghost. The Spirit Caller can also revive after three turns, which means that taking out all the ghosts are crucial. For that reason, I keep the Rainbird, but switch out Red for Bomb for the extra damage for turn. Although the battle isn't too difficult at first, the Spirit Caller spawns more and more ghosts as turns go on, eventually overpowering us, killing Chuck and leaving Bomb and barely any health. Although we do stall for a bit, it's not enough, and Bomb shortly dies, making us rely on our one free revive to stay alive. Both of our birds respawn with max HP, and over the next few turns we can finally defeat the Spirit Caller and all of his ghosts thanks to Chuck's rage ability, breaking the final part of Whizpig's shield. However, we still do have some preparing to do before we can enter. After upgrading some more hats and items, we spend the rest of our gold stellings on the Golden Pig Machine. Just like last episode, we waited until the very end to spend all of our resources, just so that all the items we would get matched with our current flock level, which was 29. After rolling the machine probably 20 times or so, I got a Dragon Tooth for Red and a Ballista for the Blues. For almost 70 golden snellings, the rewards were a little underwhelming, but it was enough to make our birds much more powerful. Next up. I decided to grind for some potions and chili cakes, as they would be absolutely necessary to withstand Whizpig's first phase. For the next three real life hours, I kept on grinding early game levels to get resources, which I would then use to craft potions and other items. After all of this grinding, I finally get about 25 potions and 25 chili cakes, and with that I can finally enter the final battle of the game, Whizpig's Castle. We enter Whizpig's castle with the blue's tricksters and red's guardian. Red is useful for his standard shield, but the blues have the main spotlight for this battle due to Whizpig's upgraded abilities. Although he only deals 78 damage, Whizpig is powered by his zombie allies. They're righty and lefty, and each dish out a damage reduction effect and a poison effect to my birds. The main kicker, however, is Whizpig's black curse. Although it barely deals any damage, it acts like an evil version of Matilda's priestess attack. If you don't know what that means, pretty much all the pigs go back to max HP whenever they attack you. And just like that, the blues become absolutely necessary to beat this battle. The main strategy is to knock out Whizpig, as he's the main threat that can heal the other zombies. 
Not to mention, Whispig is the only enemy that doesn't respawn after 3 turns, so it's really the most logical choice. We try and dish out damage with red, and prioritize the blues for keeping our birds free of effects. Almost every turn, we use potions to regen our birds back to maximum health, as we don't have any other source of healing at all. At certain points, we have to switch to defensive tactics as well, as Red Shield is a needed 25% damage reduction from the zombie pigs. Luckily, the Guardian Shield lasts for 4 turns, so you can still stay on the offensive for most of the time. This tactic is the only option I have for this battle, and we quickly drain our potions and resources trying to defeat Whizpig. Eventually, we are able to knock him out, also instantly killing his zombies, but that's not the end. Whizpig uses his most powerful spell on himself, engulfing himself in a cloud of smoke. He then emerges from the plumes, not as Whizpig, but demonic Whizpig. To counter this, Prince Porky joins the battle, but this time as an ally. For the last stage in the game, it's our team of three versus the strongest enemy in Angry Bird Epic Saga. Demonic Whizpig starts the battle off with almost 10,000 health, and boasts incredible options for attacking and defending. His black magic ability takes 3 turns to charge up, but deals 1,000 damage to every single ally, resembling the Inferno Pig. Demonic Whiz Pig also carries the Consume Spirits ability, which eats up all the ghosts on screen to heal 2,000 health per ghost. Whiz Pig also spawns in ghost every few turns, so that's neat. But yet again, Prince Porky serves at a lucky counter, as his Holy Hand Grenade has the potential to permanently knock out ghosts, which prevents Demonic Whiz Pig from healing. As another note, Prince Porky is amazing for this battle as he counts as a pig. This means that our challenge is still valid, as we are using two birds during this stage. There's just now an extra pig added. We keep on attacking Demonic Whizpig, frequently targeting his ghosts to weaken them for Porky's Rage Chili ability. After a few turns, Demonic Whizpig charges up his Black Storm and unleashes his Wrath, dealing 90% of our allies' HP even with Red Shield. Using the remaining of our potions, we heal all our allies back up to maximum health and continue trying to defeat Whizpig. At this point, we are close to finally ending the game once and for all. We whittle Whizpig down to one health using our birds, but we can't go any further with them, as his Demonic ability prevents birds from killing him. However, Prince Porky is a pig. We attack him one final time, and we defeat Whizpig. With all of our eggs in our grasp, we win the challenge. So it's time to answer the question, can you beat Angry Birds Epic with only two birds? Well, the answer is yes. And with that, that'll be all for the video. Again, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.